please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call the roll. Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Wassinger? Here. Councilmember O'Mara? Here. Councilmember Dolan? Here. Councilmember O'Leary? Here. Councilmember Harder? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. Move for the approval of journal or meeting June 9th, 2015. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The journal is approved. I move to suspend the rules for a presentation of a proclamation. Um, do you want to read the proclamation? I'll read it first, sure. Whatever I'll, you I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. May I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. I think perhaps the best way to present this is to first read it, <coughs> and then I'll come down and present. But whereas from this day forward, May 21st will forever be a day of mourning the passing of Bishop James A. Johnson, who served the congregants of Bethesda Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith for 65 years as pastor and beloved spiritual leader, as well as a day of commemoration of his life. In his long career, Bishop Johnson often books, hosted radio ministries, and served in numerous positions with the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. Bishop Johnson was known throughout the faith community as a man of wisdom, faith, and as a gentleman of gentlemen, and as one who left behind a legacy of devotion and service to God that will be celebrated well into the future. If you want to come forward, uh, kind of executive will join you. We have no bid openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Mr. Chair, there are no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so we'll move to other communications under other communications. Item number one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh districts. Receive and file. So ordered. Item number two, all districts. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number three, first district. 
receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Okay. So ordered. Item number four, fifth and sixth districts. Receive and file. And that will be the order. Item number five, sixth district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number six, sixth district. Receive, file, and deposit agreement and the subdivision plat be approved as recommended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. The same motion for item number eight, and that will be the order. Item number nine, second district. You see, file in the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 10, sixth district. Receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 11, all districts. Receive, file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. The same motion through item number 14, and that will be the order. <laughs> item number 15, first district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 16, all districts. Same motion, and that will be the order. Item number 17, 7th District. Uh, receive, file, and the county councilor be directed to prepare appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 18, 1st District. Receive, file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 19. So ordered. Item number 20, 1st and 4th Districts. Same motion. So ordered. Item number 21, 3rd District. Same motion. So ordered. Item number 22, 5th District. We found the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and the same motion for item number 23, and that will be the order. Item number 24. Uh, receive file and the matter be held on the order of business and referred to the council as a committee of the whole, and that will be the order. Item number 25, 6th District. Receive file and the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Report of the county executive. No additional report this evening. Thank you. There are no special reports of special committee this evening, so we will move to the public forum. We have six speakers tonight, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. If you would please uh, hold your remarks to three minutes, we'd appreciate that. And Jen, we'll call your names. First speaker tonight is Sabir Moten. Good evening, ladies, ladies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse my voice. I've got sprayed on, and John has got sprayed on pesticide for the past week. People have been using pesticide. City, uh, Richmond Heights. People have been using their trucks to spray pesticides in bathrooms. We go. We use public bathrooms. They put pesticides on purpose, and they smoke us out. Um, I want to mention something. Um, we all thank you for um, attempting and working about the homeless shelters. We appreciate that. Um, I just want to remind, if possible, if they can make it more diversified, because I'm going to give you um, my experience about what happened in certain shelters. At Loaves and Fishes, they um, played with my vehicle to run my battery out so that I can be in a car accident on the highway. Um, St. Patrick's Center, they told me to go to get the HEP program, that's for employment. You get empl employment training or something, and then you get $45, and then once you finish with that, then you get to get money towards your first month's rent. They set me up to where they turned off my airbags, and they had a, a semi-tractor trailer, but it had fuel, put the brakes in front of me, and I had ladies from the shelter with me, and they wanted us to be in a car accident. They were hoping to make me look ignorant, but I'm not. Now, this is going to be funny, but really it's very painful. Um, in 2000. On September, uh, August 30th, 2013, I filed paperwork in the court for family court. They discriminated against me. On September the 4th, they planned a hit on me. But before that, the Department of Social Services discriminated against me. They cut off my food stamps for over a month. So I had to eat the shelter food. They were getting me to have diarrhea. I was getting sick. I wasn't feeling good. They couldn't smock me. The way they smocked me was they had a lady go and beat me up and intend to put my head through the, the glass. 
And then guess what? The ambulance came and Abby went to Barnes Jewish. They took Abby to Dr. Elliot Nelson, who's a Jew. When I was there, he was trying to get me to be, and I couldn't open my eyes. He drugged to, to keep my eyes um, down. And then they, they said that I had a fight over at the Department of Transportation by the Metro system, which is not true. Then they had me connected to a drug court. I don't do drugs. They got me there for over 30 days because he's a Jew related forensically closely to my ex-husband. And he worked with attorney um, uh, Berlucci, Raymond Berlucci, who's a mix. Now, the key thing is about the shelters, there is an agency that should be shut down called International Partnership in Mission. Those people go to different countries and go to illiterate women. Somehow, some way, the military get them pregnant, and then they consider them foreigners, but they're really not. They're really Americans or Jews from wherever country they are. I That's took me 30 days to get out of there, and that was not fair, and I hope yeah. it doesn't happen to anybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Dr. Mita Biswas. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I would like to shed some light about the special countywide audit services RFP number 2015-5 CE, which is right now bill number 123. Uh, please allow me to shed some light regarding the concluded RFP, which I just mentioned. On April 21, RFP 2015-5 CE for special countywide audit services was floated by the county to identify areas that may have an increased likelihood of potential wastefulness, inefficiency, or fraud, identify areas of high risk, review existing controls, and evaluate internal control design and effectiveness. However, please allow me a brief background that led the county to come to this RFP. In April of 2014, the county floated an RFP for internal controls and fraud risk assessment. The RFP was probably prompted by some critical circumstances that the county was mired into at the time, prompting such a forensic audit. However, the audit was ultimately not conducted. On March 12, 2015, the RFP that the county floated was titled External Financial Audit Services, RFP 2015 number 3 PR, with a deadline of April 13. However, on April 10, the closing date for submission of bids, the last date for submission was extended to April the 24th. This RFP was quite revolutionary in that it reflected the efforts of the county to live up to the expectations of more than one million of residents in the St. Louis County and in better and efficient management of its annual budget of over 600 million. I stress that this RFP was revolutionary as the county floated uh, this RFP seeking to invite revolutionary ideas on efficient management of its funds by encouraging not only the CPA firms with a license to practice, but also the more enlightened citizens, its women entrepreneurs, and others to participate in the bidding process. On April 21, 2015, the county reopened the RFP with a new name, Special Countywide Audit Services RFP 2015-5 CE, which is now bill number 123, for, and I quote, a special countywide audit to identify areas, likelihood, finding out the potentials of wastefulness, inefficiency, and fraud. Unfortunately, this, in this fresh RFP, the county surprisingly abandoned the idea of inviting the more enlightened citizens, its women entrepreneurs, and other non-CPA firms together from participating in the bidding process. Instead, the qualification criteria was narrowed down to invite only firms having experience in conducting similar audits or take exceptions that would have lost certain points by the bidder. More surprisingly, in this RFP, there is contained clause number 4.3.2, which said, the proposal should be evaluated by an evaluation yeah. committee. That's, can you, Say that again? Uh, your time, so can you wrap okay. it up, please? Okay. Thank you. So basically, all I'm trying to say is, is my government being fair, open, transparent, allowing small active consulting individuals, women entrepreneurs, to sprout and flourish? Next. What prompted the county to move from one particular RFP, which was in March, to the new one? Third, is it that it's being swayed by the big accounting and CPA firms? Fourth, is it that it didn't allow the negotiation to happen because the upper limit was set to 150K? And finally, if I may say, 
that is it in the best in interest of the county. Thank you for giving me the extended. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker is Daryl Jones. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I don't know the procedure. I have some information that you look at at a later time because I know I only have three minutes. I have different. Yes, sir. Packages. If you would hand it to the clerk, she would be happy to give it to us. Thank you. Okay, this is a twofold. I'm asking about the concessions at North County Recreation Center. I had the contract before for four and a half years. I was terminated. I did not get a reason why. And also, I found out that since I was terminated as of March 31st, there have been no concessions at North County Rec except for one day. And under my contract, I was supposed to be there every day at certain hours. And as of now, I also had sent some letters that I had signed. I sent one to Mr. O'Mara, Mr. Stanger, and Ms. Irby. I heard from Mr. Stanger through Mr. Bess. I heard from Ms. Irby, we had, I had a consultation with her. I'd just like to know, is there a reason why there is no concession, why I was terminated, and that's just all I'd like to know. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Tom Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I'm again urging the council to reject the $140,000 audit requested by County Executive Stinger. The only purpose of this audit is to try and get the county executive off the hook for a promise he made, one he surely knew he could not keep. No doubt it sounded good for a candidate to say he would immediately require a top to bottom outside forensic audit of all county government. This was mentioned in many articles and it sounded as if any impropriety or wrongdoing would be rooted <coughs> out if you just voted for Steve Stinger. In addition to not being done in the first 100 days, there is to be no forensic audit, only a watered down audit instead. Just as the embezzlements in the health department were not caught by the annual audits, other improper payments could likewise not be caught by this audit because only sample transactions from each department will be reviewed, probably less than 5%. It's difficult to understand what the audit would accomplish if the county's outside audit could not, which is why I consider it a complete waste of money. The best reasons for not doing the audit were given by then Councilman Steve Stenger and Police Chief Tim Fitch last year. This was when County Executive Charlie Dooley wanted to conduct a forensic audit to determine how a health department official could embezzle millions of dollars. This is from the Post-Dispatch of January 3, 2014. Steve Stenger, a challenger to the County Executive in the August Democratic primary, called the proposed audit and a, quote, attempt by Dooley to make a simple fraud look complicated. St. Louis County Police Chief Tim Fitch, who requested FBI intervention in the case, agreed the reason Muth escaped detection for six years doesn't require any detective work. It's pretty simple, Fitch said. I would say that these were good reasons for not doing an audit last year and still hold true now. There are no mysteries to solve. Someone saw a way around internal controls and a lack of oversight and took advantage of it. I would suggest the council heed Mr. Stenger's and Chief Fitch's advice from last year and reject the audit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next speaker is Mike LeBlanc. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us to use this public forum. My name is Mike LeBlanc. I'm a veteran of the Armed Forces. I'm here tonight on behalf of over 350,000 veterans who live within 100 miles of Sylvan Springs Park and Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery. What we're asking, we've been asking for four years, is for the St. Louis County government to sell the Sylvan Springs Park to the cemetery administration to give more land. Estimated right now usage is going to close Jefferson <laughs> Barracks in the year 2025. We estimate it will be accelerated because more veterans are using it. We are beseeching the county government to continue the negotiations and to get them done. Four years is a little bit too long. I'm going to be followed by a World War II veteran. He's going to come up and tell you how quickly they won World War II in a more, less time than what uh, <coughs> we're doing here. The reason for this is that once the park is closed, 
or I'm sorry, once the cemetery is closed, it's closed. We need this ground. It was given to St. Louis County by the federal government for a small amount of money in the uh, late 40s. So what we're asking is just give that to the land to the rightful owners that have it and restore our ability to be buried here. Because if, if they close this uh, cemetery, my father, my grandfathers, my father-in-law, and many, many, many of my brothers are buried here. And then, in addition, when an MIA gets rescued from some foreign country and wants to be brought back to St. Louis County to his or her rightful place, and that cemetery is closed, what are we going to do? Where are we going to bury them? So again, we thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Harrison, and Mr. Chair, I'm not sure of the last name. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. Uh, Mike has mentioned, my name is Harrison Oaks. I'm a World War II veteran. As he said, and I've told a lot of people, we fought a war and won it in less time than we got a signature out of this board to transfer that ground. What I'm concerned about, they were bringing back remains from fellows from Cambodia and so forth. What are you going to tell their families? We can't bury them. There's fellows that are suffering from trauma and so forth. These fellows are going to die ahead of time. If they die in 20, 28, something like that, where are you going to put them? You're going to tell their family, them boys and, and women that suffered all their life, and but we won't honor them? It's an insult. I'm a World War II veteran. We have won a war in four years. You people cannot sign the paper in over four years, over four years, going on five. You, we were here two years ago with a petition. It seems to me we've been ignored. Uh, I, I would like to get an answer from the council after I sit down. Are you going to act on this thing? Or are we going to come back and say we need more feedback? You're getting the feedback right now. And if we have to, we'll get a whole lot of veterans here and fill the place up to let you know that we mean it. It's a sin that they can do these families that way. Thank you. Thank you for your service. That was the final speaker, Mr. Chair. I am a combat veteran, too. I know what it's like. Well, thank you. I'd like to make a comment, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, you know, I know we've been questioned when people come to speak and they ask something of the council and there's no response by any of us when they're here. I'm just wondering what we can do, what kind of procedure we can put in place so that before they leave here that someone uh, makes contact with them to let them know that their issue will be addressed. For example, Mr. Jones and Mr. Oaks, you know, they go sit down and they don't, we don't I don't know if someone's going to contact them. And I just wish the council would address that uh, in some way. Well, I, I think in the past, uh, anybody, any member of the council can say, you know, that Mr. Jones or whoever would be happy to talk to you after the meeting. I mean, that's, but we haven't done it tonight. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, I don't know. the. I, I'm not, I'm not yeah. familiar with the situation. I, and I'm not trying to push it off. I, I'm sure somebody is, but so... And I know what the procedure has been in the past. I'm just saying, I, I don't know, my heart goes out to them when they come up and speak and then they go sit and we don't say anything. We don't address it at all. We don't say someone will contact you. We don't say anything. Right. You know, I get comments from, from the public all the time about that, and I'm pretty sure some of the others you do too. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's fine. Anybody here is entitled to speak to uh, at, at the public forum? including the council, um, and we are available on a day-to-day -day basis with, for any questions uh, to your council district or, or anybody with the council, so. Just to make the 
Well, I understand. <laughs> Is that all the speakers? Yes, sir. They will con conclude the public forum. We move to introduction of bills. Bill number 132, introduced by Council Member Dolan, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $1,174,235 to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, appropriating the same for housing and supportive services, authorizing the county executive to execute necessary contracts. Bill number 133, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $800,000 from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, appropriating the same for support of the build out of lease space for the police department and authorizing execution of related documents. Bill number 134, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance forming the St. Louis County Clean Energy Development Board pursuant to section 67.2800 through 67.2835 revised statutes of Missouri and authorizing and directing the county executive to appoint members of the said board. Bill number 135, introduced by Council Member O'Mara, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to grant an easement to Amherst, Missouri on over and under property located within Veterans Memorial Park for providing and maintaining underground power cables to park facilities. Bill number 136, introduced by Council Member O'Mara, an ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and District Maps by changing the boundaries of the R3 Residential District and the R2 Residential District as provided herein, PC 13-15-925, Cold Bank Road. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. Thank you. Fractional bills? Bill number 8, introduced by Council Member O'Mara. Cold, please. Bill number, Bill number 27, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Please hold, and that will be the order. Bill number 129, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to perfect Bill number 129. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 129 is perfected. Bill number 130, introduced by Council Member Harder. I move to perfect Bill number 130. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 130 is perfected. Bill number 131, introduced by Council Member Dolan. I move to perfect Bill number 131. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 131 is perfected. Final passage of bills. Bill number 52, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Uh, please hold, and that will be the order. Bill number 116, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Uh, please hold, and that will be the order. Bill number 121, introduced by Council Member Dolan. I move for final passage of Bill number 121. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Irby? Same. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member O'Mara? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member O'Leary? Aye. Council Member Harder? Uh, abstain. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 121, there are five ayes and two abstaining. Bill number 121 is finally passed. Bill number 122, introduced by Council Member Dolan. I move for final passage of Bill number 122. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Irby? Aye. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member O'Mara? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member O'Leary? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 122, there are seven ayes. Bill number 122 is finally passed. Bill number 123, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Move for final passage of Bill number 123. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Irby? No. Council Member Page? Aye. Council Member Wassinger? Aye. Council Member O'Mara? Aye. Council Member Dolan? Aye. Council Member O'Leary? Aye. Council Member Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 123, there are six ayes and one no. Bill number 123 is finally passed. Bill number 124, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Mr. Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute bill. Okay. Substitute bill number one for bill number 124, introduced by Council Member Dolan, <coughs> an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for participation in the Section 108 Loan Guarantee Program, and authorizing the county executive, the director of planning, and the director of the Office of Community Development to submit and execute an application for participation in the program and other related and other documents related to such program. I move to uh, adopt substitute bill number one for bill number 124. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Substitute bill number one for bill number 24 is adopted. Um, 
Well, I'll go ahead and move for final passage of substitute bill number one for bill number 124. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, and substitute bill number one for bill number 124. There are seven ayes. Bill, uh, substitute bill number one for bill number 124 is finally passed. Bill number 125, introduced by Councilmember Dolan for Councilmember Page. I move for final passage of bill number 125. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, bill number 125, there are seven ayes. Bill number 125 is finally passed. Bill number 126, introduced by Councilmember Dolan. I move for final passage of Bill 126. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Staying. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. It's Chairman Bill number 126. There are six ayes and one abstaining. <clears throat> bill number 126 finally passed. Bill number 127 introduced by Councilmember O'Leary. I move for final passage of Bill 127. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 127, there are seven ayes. Bill number 127 is finally passed. Bill number 128, introduced by Councilmember Dolan for Councilmembers Page and Wassinger. I move for final passage of Bill number 128. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 128, there are seven ayes. Bill number 128 is finally passed. And moving on to resolutions, Mr. Chair, we have 16 this evening. Oh, boy. Resolution number one, introduced by Councilmember O'Leary. Hmm. Just move it down. You just move it down. Move. Okay. Move it to the docket. No, move it to, to adopt it. I'm sorry. I move to adopt number one. Second. Uh, please call the roll. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? No. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on resolution number one, there are six ayes and one no. Resolution number one is adopted. And resolutions number two through 16, introduced by Councilmember Irby. I move for adoption of resolutions number two through 16. Second. <coughs> Please call the roll. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember yeah. Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolutions number 2 through 16, there are seven ayes. Resolutions number 2 through 16 are adopted. We went to unfinished business, Mr. Chair. Item number 1, 4th District. Hold, please. So ordered. Item number 2, 3rd District. Um, I, Glenn, should I hold this until next week in light of our meeting for the resolution that's going to come in next week? You don't need a resolution. I'm just going to hold it. Please. So ordered. Next week. Okay. All right, I'll receive and file it. So ordered. Thank you. <laughs> And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have one prepared order this evening. Two for adoption of order number one. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. <laughs>